Hey guys, and welcome to another Titan Tries. This time, we're going to be taking a look at a game that the game's librarian has suggested, and that is Darkest of Days. It's actually a game that I've never heard of before, until doing a little bit of research for this project, of course. Now, you may have noticed, for this one, we've had to bust out the uh, modded Xbox 360 and that is because after Chris um, recommending this game to me I decided to have a look on eBay see if I could pick it up and would you Adam and Eve it there isn't any for sale on eBay so I decided to go to my local CEX which is uh, if you're familiar you'll know in the UK but if you're not it's kind of like a um Second-hand video game store. They sell other things as well, but mainly second-hand video games and uh, retro hardware, that kind of thing. Now, they also did not have a copy of the game. However, <laughs> I was informed that uh, this game has a rather high price. So, uh, I thought, no matter. Okay, let's have a look at the PC version. The PC version was delisted in 2021, I do believe. It was removed from Steam, and sadly, you can no longer buy it. So, well, we had to break out the old uh, pirate flag and uh, grab a copy through nefarious means and strap it into our modded Xbox 360 here, which is actually a really nice excuse just to use the bloody thing. So I bought this uh, modded 360 a while ago and yeah, it was okay. Um, you know, it was kind of cool, but it was very limited. But I have now installed Aurora dashboard on it, which is why we, you know, there's not really a lot on it anyway. But you know, given the choice, I'd rather run these games on my um, factory stock 360. Uh, but you know, in cases like this where the game is just not available, I have no issues with ripping the, you know, ripping it because after all, I would have happily bought this game from the description if it was available. So anyway, what is Darkest of Days? Well, it's kind of an interesting sounding first person shooter which involves time travel. Now, if you know anything about me, you'll know that I'm not really that into time travel. I always find it an incredibly messy concept and yeah, just full of plot holes and stuff like that. But anyway, put all that aside for once. Uh, we're not here to talk about that kind of stuff. We're here to talk about whether the game is any good or not. And, well, that's what we intend to find out today. So, Darkest of Days is a first-person shooter video game developed by 8 Monkeys Labs and published by Phantom EFX. It was released on September 10th, 2009 in North America and later in other regions. The game is notable for its unique time-traveling storyline where players control Alexander Morris, a soldier from General Custer's battalion during the Battle of Little Big Horn. After being wounded in battle, Morris is rescued by a time traveler and taken to the headquarters of Chronotech. Yes. Chronotech, an organization dedicated to researching and protecting history. Already, that's actually quite an interesting setup for a game. Um, and I'm on board. The game's plot involves time travel and features significant historical battles such as the American Indian Wars, the American Civil War, World War I, World War II, and even ancient Rome. Players get to experience events like Custer's Last Stand at the Battle of Little Bighorn in 1876 and fighting in Pompeii huh. during the eruption of Mount uh, Vesuvius in 79 AD. Darkest of Days has a mechanic where players must save key individuals marked with an orange order to ensure the, continu uh, the continuity of history. There is also random characters marked with blue aura that players can save by non-lethal means. The, play uh, the game was also released for Microsoft Windows and Mac 
OS 10. However, as of, yeah, here we go. As of August 24, 2021, it is unavailable for purchase on Steam. So Darkest of Days offers a blend of historical fiction and science fiction, providing players with a unique gaming experience as they journey through eras of history. Yeah, okay. Well, should we pop over to the actual Xbox and have a look? Blurb that the game gives you. Now, what I like about this Aurora Dash as well is it gives you the keys to the kingdom basically so once you've ripped your game which is a little bit involved but it's not too bad you can then hit up details you can get a synopsis you can check the title updates you can also grab the dlc for the game cheeky oi oi uh, and you can also check out file manager and play with your saves and that kind of stuff you can also look through your achievements and you can force unlock achievements as well which yeah i i don't fuck with that because i use my actual real gamer tag on this console and to be honest i don't see the point in unlocking achievements that kind of circumvents the whole point of them anyway synopsis tannenberg uh, Antium and Little Bighorn are some of the bloodiest days of battle in world history. Live through these events, taking on hundreds of men at the same time. Travel through time saving in travel through time saving individuals that were never supposed to die in these horrific events. While wielding powerful futuristic weaponry, can you set history back to the way it was, or will you forever change the fate of the world? Well, we're going to certainly have a go. So we also get the marketplace rating, and there's like more more information somehow that we can access as well but yeah it's a really nice cool little interface and what's great is when you rip the games uh, as long as you're connected to the internet also make sure you've disabled your console's ability to connect to xbox live because uh, otherwise kiss your ass goodbye um it downloads title updates and all that good stuff for you so let's have a look darkest of days Sure. Now, I have had this game uh, crash on me once, which was bad. Also, for some reason, I don't have any audio. May have to fix that in a minute. Oh, no, there we go. <laughs> it just kicks in. Right, let's go to the hard drive. Now, I did um, start this game just to make sure that it actually worked. Uh, I got through the first battle thing. <laughs> the intro, I should say. Uh, and then the game just hard crashed on me. So I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Typical bullshit. But no, apparently this game is just completely unstable. And if we try and download a title update for this game, otherwise known as a patch apparently there weren't any or if there was they're not available on the servers so we only have the uh launch build of this game and yes one of the um sticking points in the reviews were this game does not run very well at all and after playing through the first section of the game yeah they're not wrong you know you can count the frames uh, one of the big things about this game was the engine that they created. This engine that the game runs on, called like the Mongoose engine or something, it's only ever been used on this game, and it was created for this game. And the big thing with it is uh, you could have over 300 enemies on screen at once. I don't know if we're going to see that many. I haven't got far enough into the game. But considering what the game's like when there's about 100 enemies on screen, oof. <laughs> I, I hope not. Anyway, let's go new game. In Dune casualties in the Battle of Bighorn have never been determined. Estimates range from 36 to 300. So this game kind of just like throws you in straight away, which is kind of jarring. But you do get an intro, but it's kind of after this bit. I'm just going to sit here and Drink my death wish coffee and shut up. Oh, 
I guess there goes our horse. So we start the game off playing as Morris. Engines, not the engines. So we play as Morris. He is, as far as I'm aware, going to be our protagonist straight off the bat. Now this is the smoothest this game ever gets, screen tearing and all. Uh, I wouldn't say it ever feels that smooth, but you know that was a common thing with the 360 and uh, especially PlayStation 3s. Oh, they like their 20 frames a second if you're lucky back then. Now we have lots of engines. Well, we're just gonna fire wildly into the crowd. We can... Oh, wait, a hundred achievement points for punching a horse? All right, I wonder what else we can... Oh, I think there's another achievement as well for blowing yourself up with a nade. We'll have to experiment with that. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> we could already count the frames. Oh, I didn't know you could die there. I thought we was invincible. All right, <laughs> let's try that again, shall we? Once more with feeling. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe don't just stand in the path of the opposition. But hey, 100 gamer score for punching a horse. Uh, I'm reasonably happy with that. Right, okay. Let's kill as many engines as we can because that's what we have to do. Okay. Now, I, oof. I will say, the game does, although it's jank as fuck and the frame rate is falling apart, the controls aren't, aren't awful. Anyway, oh, hello, Mr. Injun. Well, that didn't go very well, did it? It's all right. Evening, Squire. Oh, he's dead. He's dead before I even shot him. Look at this gentleman over here. Yeah, okay. It's actually a lot harder to aim than uh, I was making it out. And we only have this pistol here as well. But we do have unlimited ammo, which is nice. And uh, muchly needed, I will say. Some very nice reload animations here which I approve of. Ooh. Oh, that, that's unfortunate. Yeah, stay down, but keep shooting. Well, uh, I think I'm pinned to the floor. I'm going to be honest. I've got, uh, I've got an arrow where there shouldn't be an arrow. I hope that's not going to be a problem. Well, we're beating them back, are we? Are we really? Kind of looks like they're getting a little bit braver, to be honest. Is this a good time to bring out the Indian peace pipe? Probably save us a lot of grief if we did. Ooh, hello. No more peace pipe for you, son. Wow, well, this is bad. <laughs> Look at the balls on this guy. Where'd you get that rifle, anyway? I guess they've been... Ooh, he's really after Custer, isn't he? Ow. Okay, I just shot him in the chest, and he didn't seem to be too bothered by that. Indians are made of stronger stuff, I guess. Well, that's not good. Oof. Oh, hello. Well, don't die. Don't die before you get me back. Damn. That would have been awkward. Chronotech was founded by a Dr. Rainer Coley. Cole? Who was later named by Time Magazine as the father of time. Oh, excellent. Does seem to be qualified to be the person to found such a company, I guess.
Commander Morris. You are indeed back among the living. Please come up here so I may tell you about your future in service of history. Well, I guess they've taken us to the futuristic hospital and got. Oh, we have no legs. Is that going to be a problem? Do we lose our legs? I mean, it's possible. Maybe we're floating. We've got one of those like anti gravity pods underneath our waist. We just float around. That would kind of explain the controls. Um, yeah, so that was kind of interesting hearing what that computer was saying. Oh, there is a difficulty setting. Huh. Do we have... Do we not have... Oh, we do have subtitles. But I guess they're kind of like context-sensitive subtitles, question mark. I mean, I guess they're activated. All right. You are in the future from your perspective. Around 300 years or so, if you're curious. We are Chronotech, and through the research and efforts of our founder, Dr. Ranier Cole, we have made time travel not only possible, but practical. It's a recent innovation. Dr. Cole took his first trip 20 years ago, and we are very careful in our travels. We use it only for research. But what a fantastic gift. The mysteries alone we've solved. Chronotech travelers witnessed monoliths being raised at Stonehenge. Another team discovered why the Mayan civilization disappeared. We've discovered and learned so much. But with the power of time travel comes the responsibility of protecting history. Dr. Cole is a fanatic about this. It's one of the reasons we call him the father of time. He knew changing history would be dangerous and foolish. Together, the goals of discovery and protecting history form the prime objective of Chronotech. Keeping that in mind, there have been some very disquieting developments. First, Dr. Cole is missing. I fear the very father of time is lost somewhere, some time out there. Second, we are identifying certain historical events out of place and certain people being put suddenly in harm's way. We discover new anomalies every day, and we can't find the cause or connection. I can explain neither Dr. Cole's absence, nor the changes we've been seeing, but I have a strong hunch they're related somehow. That's where you come in, Alexander Morris. You will be sent to different places in their times of great strife and change, charged with saving those people facing an untimely end. You are the perfect candidate to help our cause, and I'm sure you'd like to show your gratitude for being rescued from certain death. There's more you need to know, and you must have some questions. For the answers, step into the portal and meet the man who will help you along in your quest. Agent Dexter. Hmm. So, I'm guessing... Uh, the reason that we were chosen um, to become this, like, I don't know, time guardian or whatever is because, uh, you know, we were going to die there. So we have no bearing on history. You know, we had done what we were supposed to do up until this point. And by taking us out of our death spiral and just dropping us here... Um, to manipulate time from behind the curtain, we're not technically, you know, in the timeline creating um, events back in our time that would have altered things. Does that make sense? I Me, mean, it kind of makes sense. Sort of makes sense. But it's time travel, so it does make sense. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so. Okay. Uh, we are now a, a, a time guardian. I guess. So uh, one of the big plot holes that points me right in the face is this bloke who's gone missing, the father of time, Mr. Ko. Uh, he's lost in time. Wouldn't that be, like, impossible to find him out of all the possible possible realities that he could be in all the different, you know, forks of time? And I'm thinking about this too much, aren't I? Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, I am. Anyway, she could do some to just, like, back up from the camera a little bit. You know what I mean? I mean, she, she's got some very lovely eyes, and I do like what's going on above her, her eye there. But come on. Anyway. I guess you're the fucking new guy, huh? 
Now, you got some work to do, and I think you should start with some weapons training. Uh-huh. Things are a bit different these days. <laughs> All right, Dex. Let's get this done. So... I see. Well, one thing I will say is the uh, animations for the weapons and whatnot are very cool. Also, shit, kind of like Gears of War, there is an active reload system, although it is a, it's a little bit more forgiving, I think, than Gears of War. Like Gears of War, you have to be pretty bloody accurate. Whereas with this game, as long as you get kind of close to the green dot like that, it seems to work. Which I think is cool. I don't mind that. Evening there. Well done. Uh -huh. Now, the actual controls are very kind of like modern generic kind of like first person shooters shooting controls and i say that as a compliment see look we weren't really anywhere near it but we still got it uh -huh. i mean he was moving surely this rifle also does feel very good to use Shit. Ah, but I want the bunny. That's depressing. To be honest, I didn't even know there was any chance of getting a bunny, to be fair. Yeah, so we can just stay here. He says we can, you know, do this for as long as we want, but that's actually not accurate. We can do this for as long as our ammo lasts, which, you know. Ain't exactly that long. Okay, so on to the next part. Grenades. Now. <laughs> Old hands. Can we kill ourselves here? I guess we can't kill ourselves here. Nope. We must be invincible for this tutorial, which is unfortunate. Okay. So the grenades actually go a decent distance into the future. Into the future? Into the uh, field, I should say. Now, what's cool about this is it's quite easy to use them. They're very easy to predict, which is kind of rare for grenades. I think I have too. All right, there we go. That should. Oh, that went in the trench. Oh no, just. Oh wow, look at the uh, radius on a grenade there. It's actually quite good. That's gone in the trench. Okay, that hit him, but it didn't kill him. Nice. Okay, cool. Now we get to play with the big toys. <laughs> the big guns. And uh, we seem to have, like... Ooh, that's powerful. As you would imagine. A 20 gauge. <laughs> Ooh, right in his head. Oh, he's going to have a headache. Yeah, this thing's monstrously powerful and a lot of fun to use. We also have unlimited ammo. And amazingly, the rate of fire on it's pretty good. But you know. All right, let's get you checked out on the map system. Uh, Bring up your map and take a look. Back button. Neon indicates your location. Those circles are your objectives. Enemy locations, when we know where they are, are marked in red. Yeah, I see. Enemies in red. Circles are where we need to go. And <laughs> later on, we'll learn about blue guys. I think up here, actually. Okay. 
Daddy Wampus. Careful with these. The enemy within throwing distance for him to do their job. Yeah, and that's just remember, don't kill the guy for the reward. Yeah, and as we've discovered a big stupid. It's on you. Stay in line, follow officers' orders, and keep your head down. The actual um throwing distance in this game is pretty generous to be honest like you can really throw things quite a considerable distance like look at that all the way out halfway into the water there it's really not bad i like the way these come back as well i think we can use these as many times as we want as well now there is actually a mechanic of the game tied into saving the blue people if we kill the blue people, we get the opposite effect. So if we save lots of blue people, we get upgrade points at the end of the level. Uh, the more blue people we save, the more points we get. Um, what happens if we kill a blue person? I don't know, because I haven't done that. I think visually the game's not bad. Yes, sir. I'm assuming your training session went well? Yes, ma'am. I ran his weir through the gear and he seems to be gripping gravel. Very well. <laughs> After consulting with the Chronotech time stream monitors, I've isolated two individuals in immediate danger. Joseph Welch is a soldier in the Union Army in the United States Civil War. He's supposed to be away from the action working as a supply clerk, but he's suddenly been moved to the front line. Our other target is Captain Petrovich, a Russian officer in World War I. He and his troops should stay together through the war, but they're now in the path of a crushing German counterattack at Tannenberg. If either Welsh or Petrovich meets an untimely end, the repercussions could be far-reaching. Rescue them from their current crisis, and our reintegration team will get them back to their time period safely. Huh. Dexter, have you prepared mission briefings? Yes, ma'am. I've prepared mission strategies and maps and loaded them to the view screen up there. Then I'll leave both of you to your business and look forward to your successful return. Well... You got a choice to make. Where are we going? Well, uh, yeah, we actually get to pick our missions here, which is rather curious. Um, uh, Germans on the run or night moves. I don't, I don't know if there's anything more to the mission selection here. I do know from having a quick peek beyond the veil at the achievements. It says something here about... Oh, there we go. Punch a horse in the face, killing it. Um, complete all levels in the Civil War. Ah, locate and complete the secret mission at the end of the game. So, fully upgrade all pistols. Fully upgrade uh, grade all rifle settings. Complete a combat level without using any lethal attacks. You know, I don't think that would be that hard. Kill at least 25 NPCs with your bare hands. That probably won't be too difficult. Kill yourself. Ah, there we go. Kill yourself with an explosive device. Oh, die of suffocation underwater. Jeez. Who who uh, who made these achievements? You must achieve glorious amounts of death. Anyway, uh, let's resume. So, let's go for Germans on the run, shall we? This is during the opening days of World War One at Tannenberg. You're in the second Russian army, which has three big problems. Number one, first Russian army general Renkamp wouldn't piss on second army general <laughs> Samsonov if he was on fire. He's hung the second army out to dry just because he hates Samsonov. Number two, both of these dumb shit generals have been broadcasting their orders on the radio, unencoded. Number three, the Germans know all this and they set to kick Russian ass. Well, after this one, Russia doesn't march on German soil again until 1945. The Second Army is destroyed. Over 125,000 Russian troops are lost. Jeez. Somehow, Petrovich has been moved to the Second Army. We know he made it out of Tannenberg. 
but about a hundred thousand Germans are breathing down his neck. We're gonna get you close, just south of the town, but it's gonna be a fucking mess out there. Which means it's gonna be a pain in the ass to find Petrovich. I'll be there to help you track him. Look for me when you get there. It's kind of interesting how uh, you've got two uh, officers there that are leading thousands of men to their deaths because they don't like each other. Now, I know this is a video game and, you know, it's a, you know, it's all um, fiction to a degree, right? But I'm sure this stuff actually kind of happened as well. Anyway, let's select that mission and uh, get a wiggle on, I suppose. Killing to be done. German Colonel Max Hoffmann intercepted a radio transmission of Russian General Rennenkamp's marching orders to his troops. Upon receiving a second radio interception, he moved to counter the Russian attack plans. Well, all right. Let's go. <clears throat> Oof, God. Yeah, this game is very much in theme with other um, seventh generation games where, you know, the color palette is basically gray and shit brown. Yeah, what a what a welcome, <laughs> what an introduction to HD graphics, right? Yeah, we can create vibrant, beautiful games, but everything's gonna be shit stained brown. But you know, towards the style of the time. Yeah, right, that's chief. Oh, you you got a dead body on your lap, sir. I hope that doesn't cause any uh, problems for you going forwards. So, we start with just the one weapon, I believe, and chasers. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. Ooh. So, we've got a melee with the rifle, and there's kind of a bayonet stab, but... There's also like a, a rifle butt thing. You would have thought it just would have been the the bayonet stab, but whatever. Okay, let's go. And already we're counting the frames, but that's okay, right? That's that that's just putting up the difficulty. Hold back for a map. All right. Ooh, we got a big melee going on over here. Do we have the Germans? Kind of difficult to tell the enemies apart, to be honest. Apart from our German friends, of course, wearing their piss pot helmets. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Okay. Ooh, we've got another rifle. I mean, sure, we'll take it. Let's get over here, shall we? And we need to clobber more enemies. Wow, he just literally appeared. That's fine. I'm sure there had to be There's some concessions. He's pinned down. Get your ass on that gun and provide cover fire. I, now, I, I'm on it. I'm on it. Ooh, look at this. We got a chitty chitty bang bang. Right, here come the Germans. Let's gun them down in their thousands. Ooh, I guess this gun's overheating. Yeah. I don't know how the overheat thing works. <laughs> I like that. Nice work, Rocky. Excellent skills murdering people. Right, there's our friend that we need to keep alive. Ooh, almost. Almost cut my friends in half. Well, you know. Technically, uh... Oh, shit, guns... I think the gun was overheating. Not 100% sure. It stopped firing, so... That's generally not a good indicator. Oh, there we go. So once it overheats, yeah, we cannot. Yeah, once the gun overheats, we can't fire again until it's cooled off completely, which I guess is fine. Standard stuff, really. Oh, no running, Fritz. So we got to find Petrovich. Maybe he's got some vodka or something. Come on, buddy. This path is the only way you could have made it. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Good thing I've got this massive digital map on me. They could have given you something, you know, like some kind of tablet or something, which would have made a little bit more sense, but, you know, video game's going to video game, am I right? Oh, hello. Oh, there are boys. I don't think there's, like, any collectibles or anything like that in this game. Ooh, hello. Yep, Russians. We're not shooting Russians today. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. Ooh, here we go. We've got some more action. Take a piece of the action. Let's go see if we can duff some of these guys up. There you go, Fritz. What do you think of that? Huh? Excellent. I think we can wade quite deep into the uh, into the battlefield here. Is that a Russian or is that a German? Hard to tell. Well, bayonet goes in either way. Right, Germans, where be the? Ah, hello. Now I don't know how quickly we can die. Oof, dear. Probably quicker than I would like. Okay. You know, actually, oof. I don't know if I killed any of them. Uh, it's fine. Oh, actually, maybe I did. It takes a little while for that health to come back. Alright, let's see if we can get our achievement, shall we? Oh, hello, Fritz. Oh, no more sauerkraut for you, sir. Okay. It's getting a little bit hairy. Oh, the Russians. Come on. There we go. All right. I can't quite work out how the health system... Wait. You're not... Oh, maybe he was an officer or something. Not really sure. I think this is going to be an easy achievement to pop, actually. Oh, evening. You're all on your own, sir. More cabbage for me, I guess. Uh-oh. Things are, things are going south here pretty quickly. Yeah. Run. Let's get behind the rock. Everybody knows that rocks are good cover. Unless they have artillery. Uh, you know what? Whoop. Hot potato. Ooh, nice. Hey, excuse me, Fritz. My rock. Ow, ow, ow. Hey, you don't beat my friend to death. Not very nice. Oof. Whoops. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Ah, we got them all. Nice shooting when I wasn't running. What are you talking about? Uh-oh. That's not good. Oh, this is cool. Uh, hold your breath, son. No? Okay. Should have brought your gas mask then, shouldn't you? Yeah, at least I came prepared. Though I think Mother equipped me, to be fair. Yeah, we're going, we're going. Well, you know, there was one way to uh, get around mustard gas, and that was get a rag, piss on it, and then <laughs> wrap it around your face. Yes, that's true. I mean, it doesn't sound pleasant, but better than having your lungs burn out through mustard gas, I suppose. Wait, was that for mustard gas or was that for chlorine gas? I forget. Well, I suppose if I'm ever in that situation, I have a 50-50% chance, <laughs> depending on the gas. Uh, would be funny. Until it isn't, of course. Right, these guys need to survive, so we're going to throw them. Now, I don't know if the enemy or our allies, oof, I should say, would... Ah, there we go. I don't know if our enemies are going to shoot the guys with blue auras. I don't know. I hope not. Oh, hello. Boop, boop. Give you some little taps. <laughs> there we go. Oh, uh, that's enough for him. Um, I think the blue aura guys 
if they die or get disabled, they're still kind of on the field. Ah, he's run away. Their bodies are just lit up with blue. So you, I guess you know if you've um, disabled them correctly. Whoop. Right, okay. Let's give them some of that. Let's give him some love taps. There we go. Oh, he's giving me some back. Right, don't shoot the blue guys, friends. All right. I can't explain why it's important, but it's important because mother says so. Oof. There we go. I hope mother is back at base proud of me. Ooh. <laughs> now this guy's got a hell of a left hook. Like, we're throat punching these guys or something. God damn. Now have we lost some of these balls? I get the feeling one of these is missing. Maybe it'll come back to us at some point. Oh, hello. Right, let's go do some throat punching. Oof. Yeah, this is better than using the rifle, man. This is way more... Ooh, there's a lot of them. There we go. <laughs> there you go, friend. You need to survive. Now, I don't know if we punch the enemies. If that's actually... <laughs> punched, fisted him in the ass. Ooh, this looks bad. Yeah, I don't know if punching them counts as, like, a non-lethal attack. I don't know. I guess we're going to find out at some point. Do we have any more the Germans? Uh, please don't shoot all my German friends. I need to punch them to death. There we go. All right, how are we doing? Any more Germans? Those Germans, man. I mean, they really did want to take over the world, didn't they? They tried. Well. You know, I had a good teacher, I guess. Uh, are we going the wrong way? We are going the wrong way. Man, this frame rate. Oof, it's rough. It is very rough. Wait, we've got two... We've got two um, objective markers, which is curious. Alright, let's just carry a handful of balls with us. Make sure we don't drop them. I guess we're following this retreat. I guess we're retreating. Oh god, that's not good, is it? We're up the hill. At least I hope we're up the hill. Ooh. Hey, guys. Whoop. Ah, oh, maybe these guys, these don't home in on important people at all. Uh, unless they're important, I should say. Yeah, I don't think... So you can't use them on a big group of people, for instance, to disable... Whoa. Yeah, who needs frames? 60 FPS is over. Fuck. Overrated. Fuck, I'll take 30, mate. <laughs> I'll take anything. <laughs> Give me 25. Jesus. Right, I guess we're just, like, running for it now. Okay. Someone's got a machine gun. Oh, <laughs> there's a tank there. That's not good. Let's run in the opposite direction to the tank. It's probably a good idea. I Right. I want to blow myself up with a grenade for an achievement. Let's sit on that. Yay! <laughs> Bomb technician. I'm not... Not rating the uh, interface too highly, I'll be honest. But, you know, it was early, early times. And I'm guessing this game was produced by a very small team as well. Because the only other game uh, this team has made since this one is a game called Battle Slots, which appears to be some kind of live service 
uh, mobile phone game of some description. So, yeah, I'll go figure, I guess. How do you know your game did poorly? You're making mobile phone games. Right, have we got any more Germans? I need to throat punch. Can we, like, punch our own friends? You right there, Chief. <laughs> I guess we can't. Ah, sad face. Right, let's have a look. Oh, hello. Nice coat. Uh huh. Just nod and smile. Come on outside, and I'll tell you what he said. Yeah, I'm sure he didn't hear you saying that. Oh, I could use a loaf of bread right about now. Right. Okay. All right. What he was saying. Oh, my balls are twitching. Oh. Oh. That sounds like our next destination. But I want to head back to the Chronotech Labs and do some planning. Come on, let's blow this pop steam. Oh my, yep, my balls are jiggling in my hand. That's fine. I'm sure that's fine. There's probably something you can give me for that when I get back. What are we on? We're almost on 50 odd minutes here. Right, so I think I'm going to leave this one here. We're going to get back. Um, I'll show the mechanic of how we upgrade our weapons. And then we will move on to some thoughts. I've received Dexter's report. It sounds like all hell was breaking loose back there. Good job getting Petrovich off the battlefield. It was bad luck you couldn't catch up with him. Our research shows a location just outside Frankenau is the best rendezvous point for Petrovich. And don't forget about Welsh in the Civil War. Remember, maintaining the integrity of history is our mission at Chronotech. Your job will be a lot easier if your shooting irons are in better shape. Our team is working on improving period weapons, but they're also running interference for you. Remember the people with the blue auras? The fewer of them you kill, the more time our team has to work on your weapon systems, and the less time they spend cleaning up after your worthless ass. Come on over to the weapons table. I can show you more. I mean, I, I guess that's a good enough explanation for, you know, how you get more points. Um, so that does make me wonder if we shoot the blue guys, does anything actually happen apart from the fact we just get less points at the end of the level? I don't know. After every mission, assuming you don't totally screw it up. Ah, see, so we've got three upgrade, upgrade points. points. You can use these points to get more ammo and equip, faster rate of fire, better accuracy. You get the idea. Once you use them, though, you can't get them back. So choose carefully. Okay, and I think there's uh, an achievement for fully upgrading all of your weapons. Uh, and I don't know whether there's like any kind of new game plus. If I had to guess, I'm going to say probably not. So I'm assuming... That actually sounds fun. Also, um, mother prefers me, by the way. She says I'm the most handsome. So we have three upgrade points. Uh, and as we can see here, there's actually like a lot of things to upgrade. <laughs> sure, buddy. So yeah, we can upgrade our weapons, and I guess that this applies to everything. Now, I'm assuming this applies to like every weapon, even the ones that we find in the field. It isn't just, for instance, the weapons that you come into the battle with. I'm assuming this, but I don't know. Um, I would say accuracy is probably, or reload speed maybe. Clip size could be useful. Rate of fire, I don't rate that one too highly, but I would say accuracy and reload speed. Oh, I don't know. Any of these three, really. But anyway, we spend those. Really? You are the world's funniest man, aren't you? Huh? 
God, you're ugly. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, I, I think this game's got some real potential, actually. Um, doing some research... This game didn't necessarily get a negative reception, but it was called very, you know, mediocre. Um, and the reviews certainly reflected that. It, it, it kind of got like middling scores. The Xbox 360 version actually got quite low scores. I think it got like 40%, but overall, I think the game, you know, came somewhere um, in the mid sort of tier of uh, shooters. And I, I do wonder if some of that was because, obviously, if you go back to the 360 and PS3 era, yes, the uh, the seventh gen was just completely saturated with first-person shooters. So something like this that has kind of like a novel idea that doesn't have multiplayer either, as far as I'm aware, probably was going to get reviewed pretty pretty harshly now i don't think the technical issues really help the game much uh, certain sections of this are just an absolute slideshow uh, but you find you know going back to seventh generation games that's not that uncommon so but this game is particularly bad with that but then they were trying something new um they were trying you know big open battles didn't really feel like big open battles they kind of played up the ai system in this game where like all uh everybody on the battlefield has their own ai their own pathfinding you know they can make their own decisions not really seeing a lot of that in 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 this game but you know maybe it's because we're spoiled with uh, modern games that have well ai to varying degrees i suppose but you know, we have moved further on than this game. So I don't know if this game's ever going to see a re-release, if it's ever going to be put back up on Steam. It would be nice, because it'd be nice to play this game in something, you know, uh, something more than 10 frames a second and with a mouse and keyboard. Having said that, when this game isn't stuttering like a, like an old man, it it's okay. The controls actually work reasonably well. I also think this one's probably going to be a good game if you want to get an easy thousand achievement score, which, I mean, I'm going to do. I'm going to play through this game because at the end of the day, was it fun? Did I enjoy myself whilst playing this game? Yes. And I don't know if you noticed, but checkpoints seem to be fairly regular. I think it's pretty much, you know, every couple of minutes we were hitting a checkpoint, which is good does make me think that the hardest difficulty if the checkpoint system is the same probably isn't going to be too bad uh, and i would just like to see more of it i'd like to see more of the weapons i'd like to see where we go i'd like to see how the story unfolds really so anyway guys that is darkest of days on the xbox 360 let me know what you thought thank you very much for watching and as always till next time